Yo. All right. What's up, guys? Uh, today, wait, wait, Nick and Doug here back again with another rad podcast. Uh, today, we're going to just talk about injuries in BMX mountain bike, I guess, action sports in general, and maybe share some experiences that we've had personally with injuries and some ways that we were able to overcome them um, and ways that you're able to overcome them if unfortunately you do an ankle mctwisty or break break a rib i don't know uh, we don't ankle mctwisties are my biggest fear and we don't we don't like those but but the reality is is like what we're doing is dangerous what you guys are doing is dangerous and if unfortunately if you get hurt it's not the end of the world And you're able to come back, come back stronger and still do what you love. And so I guess that's kind of the basis of it. But Nick has had some pretty gnarly injuries. So Nick, run me through. What's your worst one? Don't scare these people though. Actually, uh, you know, knock on wood. um, I would say uh, generally avoiding injury, I would like to think is one of my strong suits. Um, I uh, I had a couple last year though, um, which was kind of a bummer because I think I went like five years without having without the off- an injury, like without like a real one, you know. Yeah. Like I consider, I consider like a real injury as one where like, you know, takes you. Where you, I would say a, a real injury is like what happens when you not only stops you from riding, but you also have to like adapt your day to day life for a little bit, whether that be walking on crutches or using your left right. hand for opening doors and stuff, you know, whatever. And generally since like, you know, 2016 or 17, I think I broke my wrist in 2017. And then, and then I had two hip surgeries that year, which is not really, uh, it's not really an injury. That was just a a thing. Um, but then I was good until last year and last year I had an ankle injury. When I talk about it, I just say I broke my ankle. Um, but the, there was too much swelling. They couldn't actually tell in the x-ray. And they told me once I got home from the East coast, like two weeks later to get it re x-rayed. And I just didn't. Um, I feel like I've twisted ankles enough and stuff to know that like, you know, if, if I was able to, you know, while I was still on my trip, walk with the boot and then I was at the beach and I was walking without the boot cause I didn't want to get the sand wet yeah. and it felt stable in my head. I'm like, okay, if I just take it easy for a little while, there's nothing of that going to a doctor and paying them more money is going to, is going to change. And luckily I was right about that. I think, cause I haven't had an issue since then. Um, but then of course, right when I got back on the bike, like three days later, I hit that tree and I hit a tree oh, head on. Yeah, yeah. Like I went head first into a tree and I hurt my knee. I don't know how, <laughs> I think there was a big root at the base of this tree and I must've like flung and hit it and I hurt my knee. But what's so weird about the body is it was like the inside of my left knee is what hurt. And it felt very unstable. Like, and I've never heard a knee before this. I didn't know if it was like a, right. a blown out ACL, PCL. I don't even know what I did at that time. I didn't know what connected where, you know, but what was weird is the only sign besides like my arms, the only sign of any like damage, like, uh, like bruising or anything mm-hmm. was on the outside of my left thigh. Like I had a big old Charlie horse and a big old, like but he you hit the inside of your knee. See, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how yeah, that's wild. it hurt the inside of the knee because how could I have hit the outside of my left thigh so hard that it gives me like this big hematoma bruise, but then also hit the inside of my knee? Like that would have you ever taken get it something diagnosed? to be like, you know, and smushed me. Like, I don't really know. So part of me thinks maybe I hit the outside so hard that it pulled on that muscle on the inside of my knee. And that's what made my knee feel like it was hurt. Like maybe it wasn't ever my knee that was actually hurt. Maybe it was just my, my leg muscles tensing up. But anyways, that bothered me for months. I still feel it in my, in my knee. I still feel that, that muscle tightness. Um, so I would say as of right now, 
that one's kept me pretty, pretty weary since July of last year, which is you know, right. six, six months. That's a pretty long time. It's kept me a little weary. I mean, I feel, it feels strong. I actually, when I was riding last week, I actually like, uh, crashed or slipped a foot or, or something. And I hit my knee directly on the handlebar, right in the spot where it hurts mm-hmm. or like right in the spot where it was hurt. And yeah, I was like waiting to feel the pain. I was like waiting to feel like, uh Oh, I just hit a bad spot. And, uh, I never did. It wasn't sore the next day or anything. Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, maybe it was mm-hmm. never in the knee. Maybe it was just like all those tight muscles in my leg pulling at my knee. I don't know. Maybe it was never my knee that hurt. Cause I never got, it never got out. diagnosed. Right. Okay. No, yeah. because again, um, they were like, you need to go home. I was out of state. They're like, you need to just go get an MRI, blah, 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 blah. Well, I was on a trip for like a month. And then by the time I was done with the trip, I was pretty confident in my own. Pretty much better. It was yeah. yeah, what it was. See, it's like one of those things, uh, I'm trying to think of a good analogy, but you like your car's having problems. Okay. Let's say your car's having problems and then you take it to the mechanic and your car is not having problems. They're like, no, I don't know, nothing, nothing going on. And so then you take it back and then it's having problems. And, and you can't tell your friends like, yo, my car is doing this, this, and this, or, or you just, you can't complain about it because there's no diagnosis. And it's kind of the same with injuries. I feel like, like I've had, um, hurt my knee at Woodward that one year and just kind of twisted it, but I never went and got it looked at. It just hurt if I put pressure on it, but it, I don't know. Meniscus seemed fine. Everything seemed fine. So it's like, you can't really complain about it justly. If you like, if you say, bro, I tore my meniscus, everyone's like, Oh dang, that's crazy. You say my knee hurts. They're like, Oh, you're a baby, you know? And so, so it's hard to deal with injuries that you don't get diagnosed um, because you're the only one that can really feel that. Um, you've broken how many bones? Just your wrist. Have you broken more? Um, so I've only, officially with x-ray diagnosis broken an ankle once and a wrist once um which one was the worst they were both very very minor um (laughs) the ankle the ankle was annoying because it was in an you know it's funny so i broke the wrist on a resi and i broke the ankle in an airbag um i have better chances that that was recent no, no, the Man. the resi, it was someone's backyard resi in uh, 2017. I did a flip oh. whip, and uh, I did a flip whip, and when I landed on the resi, the front wheel slipped out, and I just mm-hmm. literally just barely fell over and put my hand down, and it it broke. it broke the wrist. But uh, which is why injuries are so crazy, you know? Like when I did that thing with my knee and my ankle could not get on the bike again, could not ride. Yeah. Like the ankle, you know, I was able to like put weight on it, but I wouldn't have been able to like actually ride for sure. And then it ballooned up as soon as I took off all my pads. Um, mm-hmm. The knee, it felt so unstable. I couldn't even like lift my leg. Like it was just the weirdest thing. Um, Dang. Like I really thought there was some serious damage done, but I don't know if it was muscles cramping. But the when I broke my wrist in 2017, I rode the rest of the day. I continued the session. It hurt. I knew something wasn't right. Yeah, um, yeah. And then after about two more days, I was like, yeah, something's definitely wrong with this thing, you know? <laughs> and, uh, cause that's the thing is, you know, you said it's, you know, it's hard to have a injury that's undiagnosed. And I, I almost feel like not immediately rushing to a doctor, um, you know, if, if something's severe, absolutely 100% yeah. go, you know, I would never tell anybody to like risk anything, but having had so many times where there potentially could have been a small fracture, you know, and I'd never got it checked out or, or anything like that. To me, it takes a certain feeling of something really not being right. Like, I feel like there's, there's pain. There's like a, you know, the temporary like sprain kind of pain, you know, Mm -hmm. that like kind of becomes easily irritated for a little bit. And then there's like, there's like a different kind of pain 
where no distraction stops it from happening, you know? And I always it's just always there. Yeah. Like, cause sometimes I think if you can be distracted and the pain feels like it goes away, maybe sometimes then, you know, something might not be too serious and you can right. just, you know, listen to your body. Whereas if something can't distract you from it and you, you feel it and something's not right, then you should go get it checked out. But part of me thinks that like all these times of not, you know, going straight to a doctor, one has taught me how to deal with like the pain of it, you know, but right. also very much, uh, taught me how to deal with my own injuries and like, listen to myself, you know, I don't need a doctor to tell me not to ride for two, three, four weeks. You know, I don't need a doctor to tell me not to wrench my ankle into a position that it doesn't feel good in. You know, I feel like I'm very good at being like, okay, there's, there's no bones sticking out. I have some kind of movement except for this like swelling that's there, you know, let me vibe it out for a few days and like, really like listen to myself. And then also, you know, like I said, if, if I can just say, Hey, my ankle's broken, you know, then I just can just tell myself that whether it's broken or not. And then I won't, right. won't try to hurt it for four weeks. And then I'll like treat it just as a broken ankle. Try to keep it. Exactly. That's try to keep it say. stable for a little bit. Don't do anything, you know, extensive, but if it doesn't hurt at all to walk on it, like slightly, I'm going to keep those muscles built up a little bit. And then I'm going to, when I return to riding, I'm going to treat it just as if it was just broken. And if I see pushback, like with pain or anything, you know, then we reevaluate the situation, you know, right. but I don't, I think a lot of times dealing with an injury is really knowing yourself and, and managing it and convincing yourself what you're feeling is either a real <laughs> or B like, can you manage it yourself or do you need someone else to manage it for you? Cause I would say that's really what a doctor is there for with an injury. Most of the time they're there to manage it. They're there mm -hmm. to either fix it or they cast you. So you won't mess it up again. But you know, if, yeah, if, I think you got to look at it like, <sighs> What well, for first, first, we're not medical professionals, so Ooh. don't, don't sue us, but, um, you know, but nine times out of 10, if you have an injury, let's say ankle, for example, and your ankle hurts. Okay. There's two things. Your ankle's either broken or it's not broken. Moral of the story, it hurts. And so whether you go figure out if it's broken or whether you just feel a lot of pain, the outcome I, I feel like is going to be very similar. You, you avoid the pain. Um, and, and then in a certain amount of time, the pain goes away, broken, not broken. It's just, it's going to be the same thing. And so to me, I was never able to wrap my head around the idea of going somewhere, paying $50 for a visit, paying $250 for x-rays just for them to say, Oh yeah, it's broken. Don't walk on it. It's like, damn it hurt. I wasn't going to walk on it anyway. Like it's painful to walk on it. I wasn't going to anyway, but thank you. Thank you so much for, uh, for, for this valuable time. Like th the outcome would have been the same either way. Now, if your ribs poking through your chest, like you said, or bones sticking out. Okay. That's, that's a little bit different. And, um, and granted it's all, I think it's about tolerance and stuff. I have, the like these two are pushed out more because I I fell, and uh, I don't know, they either broke and got st stuck that way or they never went back. But it's like, wh what do you do about broken ribs if they were broken? You just you're in pain for a while and then they heal up. And so so I just didn't do anything about it. And and now guess what? They feel fine. They're just a little a little dis disformed. Um, but that's a very man way of dealing with things like just avoid, avoid the problem at all costs and carry on. But I, I think it really comes down to ultimately you're going to feel better when you feel better, whether you get that diagnosis or not, you know? Yeah. And I, I think it's like, like I, like I said, I'm in no way ever, you know, recommending you don't go to a doctor or anything like that. I'm just more saying my experience Right. Has 
I've just always been more of a, with with my experience, I've been more of a like, give it a couple days. If it doesn't get better, that's when you go to the doctor. But after, yeah. you know, the last 20 years of that being my thing, you can almost, I'm, I, I think I'm more what I'm saying now is that I know now it doesn't take me three days. Now I know if I need to go to the doctor right then or yeah, if I'm not going to have to go. Like, I think that's more what I'm, what I'm getting at is, you know, having all of these experiences and all these like minor injuries has like, I know what something feels like and what it's probably going to yeah. feel like in a, in a couple of days based off of that. And so if something like, I just, I've just learned to know my body really well. And I think if I had always gone to the doctor every time I crashed and something like hurt, you know, sometimes you hit the ground and you, it just hurts, mm -hmm. you know, but then after like, it goes away. you start riding again and you're like, oh, I'm fine. And then the next day it's sore as hell, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But like, you got to think there's probably people who, if they don't ride bikes or do any kind of extreme sports, if they ever hit the ground like that, freaking they'd be, True. they'd be in the ER. Yeah. They'd be like, Oh my God. Like, you know, like I had a doctor one time I came in because I sliced my hand trying to open an avocado and classic. Yeah. I got stitches right in the webbing of my fingers uh -huh. trying to open an avocado. And I was all burnt up from a crash that I had had like big old scrapes. Yeah. And he was like, he's like, Oh, where'd you do that? I was like, I was, I was riding a bike. Don't worry about it. And he's like, he's like, you don't, when you do that, you don't come in and like get that all cleaned up. Like, no, you know how much money I would spend in hospital bills if every <laughs> yeah, time I fell real. down, I went. And yes, yeah, basically what I'm saying is like, you know, if I hadn't learned this, like this kind of waiting game of like, okay, let me give it a couple days. Let me see how I feel. Let me see how this feels. Mm -hmm. Let me see what it's affecting. I don't think I'd be good at dealing with injury. I wouldn't know when something is actually wrong. Yeah. Like, and now that I'm, you know, getting older, I feel like I'm really good at, at balancing, like, you know what? Something feels a little funny here. Let's not push it. Let's just, let's give it a, let's give it a week of like mellow riding, you know, let's give it a week of not doing something that I think would endanger that. And, I feel like that's that's really important in not only preventing injury but managing it as well is just yeah. like knowing how you feel and trusting how you feel. Don't let a doctor tell you like how you should be feeling about a certain injury because there's plenty of times like I've seen it with other people and I'll I'll also be the first to tell you like you know get second opinions on things. Yeah. If, if you I was don't, just going to say that you don't they're not agree, always right. No, if yeah, you don't agree, right. you're going to get a second opinion because I, in 2014 went in, they x-rayed, Oh, it's broken. And they said, you're going to need a screw put in because it's the scaphoid bone in your, in your wrist. They said it doesn't heal well because there's no blood flow, which is true. There's not a lot of blood flow to that, which is why often that wrist injury doesn't swell. And that's the one that's often put from mm -hmm. your hand. Um, doesn't swell a lot, but also doesn't heal. It's the same reason why it doesn't swell is because it doesn't heal. Um, and so they're like a screw in it. Week, two weeks, you'll be good to go. Mm. But they're like, but we need to do a CT scan to see which way is the best way to do it. I go in there after two weeks of having the cast on after the CT scan. The guy cuts off the cast the guy who's not the doctor, he's like the assistant. Yeah. He yeah, cuts yeah. off the cast and he opens up my fingers and he's like, how does this feel? And he bends my wrist back. And I was like, actually fine. And I was yeah, moving this, like I was anything. moving it like this. And I was like, well, this is weird. And I see the doctor walk by and this guy had already left the room. And I hear them kind of like yelling at each other in the hall. And the doctor's like, why is his cast off? Like this doctor didn't know even why I was there. He's the one who's supposed to put this screw in my hand. You know, he's like, why is this cast off? And then like some lower, lower talking. And then they must've looked at like a file or something. Doctor comes in and he's like, you're good to go. <laughs> what? 
<laughs> Decided you didn't need the screw after all. Yeah, he said the CT Damn. scan showed no break. So they wasted uh, two weeks of my so time. So was the cast for nothing? The ca- You didn't yeah. even need the cast? No. Bone oh, was, the bone was never man, broken. Crazy. I wore a cast for two <laughs> weeks. And for nothing. For nothing. But then I had the reverse happen when I broke my ankle in that airbag. Yeah. ER said it wasn't broken. So oh, I went it home. Actually was. I went yeah. home with like a little brace and I tried to walk on it for like two weeks and it just kept getting more and more and more swollen. Went to an orthopedic. And he looked at me like I was stupid. And he's like, because he took his own x-ray. He looked at me like I was stupid. And he was yeah. like, yeah, dude, it's broken. <laughs> it's very broken. And I so, was going to say. But like I, I went to him because after like those two weeks, I was like, this is not right. You know, and right. I, was only, I was only 15 at that time. But even then, it's like you kind of know. And when I jumped the gun to go to the doctor for that broken wrist, you know, they, they casted it. And then it wasn't mm-hmm. even broken. And it's like, if I would have just given it two more days, it probably yeah, would have been fine been, and would have avoided known. that yeah. whole thing and that $600. Like, I think there's a, my, my kind of rule of thumb with that is, is it, is the pain level staying the same or getting better or is it getting worse? And so like, you know, it's like, okay, I just hurt myself next day. Usually if it's nothing serious, you're, you're going to stay about the same pain level or it's going to feel a little bit better. And it's when it's, when it's significantly worse, you're like, okay, you know, this is a problem. And, and then you kind of think about it, feel it out for one more day. And if it, it's just like a cold, I think, you know, if you have a cold, you're like, oh man, I have a cold. And you wait a few days. If your cold's still there for a week or, or it's getting worse, you're like, Hey, this is not just a cold. Like I'm going to go get this checked out and figure out like if I'm dying or something. And, uh, that's kind of always been my mentality with the injuries. I think, I think that's exactly true. Like I said, that actually, the way you just said that makes it, uh, makes it make a lot more sense. Like like I said, I really don't want it to come across that. Like you hit the ground really fucking hard and you do something and you're like, Nick said not to go to the doctor. I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. (laughs) I'm just saying that like, once you've done stuff like this for a long time, minor injuries really do. They start to relate like colds do where you, Mm -hmm. something feels off, you know, you have a little bit of an injury and you start to go, okay, I think this might be just minor, you know, like it's more just learning what things feel like. And like I said, with that, with that knee thing, oh, I knew the second I tried to throw my leg over that bike, I knew something was really wrong. And then when I went to the doctor and they told me, you know, you're going to have to go back and get an MRI. Well, then I made my own decision to just keep it braced and continue on my, yeah. on my travels and take it easy. And by the end of that trip, I was coaching mountain bikes, couldn't pedal, but like the more I rode, the better the knee felt. And if it, if the knee would have felt worse every day that I tried to ride, I would have stopped every day that I rode, you know, this is probably three weeks after the injury day one, couldn't pedal the bike, like couldn't pump, couldn't really do anything by, by day 10 of riding. So this is two weeks, five days of riding, two days off, five days of riding by that 10th day of riding. I felt 100% like myself again. And so it's like, that was just me every day, taking it very slowly. And as I felt myself getting stronger, it's like, okay, there couldn't be, in my opinion, there couldn't have been something really tragically wrong, but I still always had in my head like that, Hey, it's still risky. You know, you still could do more damage, but you just, like I said, I think you just listen to your body. And if your body feels strong, like I know when I feel weak, so if my body mm-hmm. feels strong, then I'm going to, going to push it. Like if you go into the gym and obviously I don't lift big weights, <laughs> I'm a little guy, but like if one day, you know, you're lifting and it's just something about it feels right. And you know, you can like, you know, do that last little bit, you know, or add weight or whatever. Yeah. But I feel like you would know if you went in there and like, say, you know, you're going to do some squats or something and your knee like wasn't feeling that stable where you're not going to throw on that extra weight. You're not stupid. No. Yeah, of course. It's like, you know, your body, you know, your limitations. And 
Um, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to think that we deal with all of these injuries and, and we talk about it so normally, like you're saying at the doctor, he's like, Oh, you don't get this checked out because the normal person who's not like, like all of us that, that ride bikes and stuff, it, you, you trip over something and you fall or, or you have a bruise or, or you cut yourself open. It, it, that's the end of the world. And you got to go get that taken care of. And, and I think we, I, it's almost like we're pressured or sold that kind of mentality. The medical industry is ridiculous prices. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. And so I don't know, I, I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I think there's a reason that that mentality is a thing. Like, like you're almost, if you get hurt and you don't go to the doctor, like you're almost shamed for it. You know, it's like, you didn't go to the doctor. It's like, well, you know, like I'm fine or I feel fine. Why? And, and it's, it's just a weird thing because for us, it's such a normal, you know, it's so normal that we, we get injured and, and uh, we just carry on. But let's talk about you do get injured. And then what happens? Like, what are some, some good ways to recover? Um, once you're injured, you know, it obviously depends on the injury and what your doctor says to do. If you, if you, uh, if you go see a doctor. Um, but for me, I've always found like, like small exercises or time in the gym or something like that helps me out immensely. Like if, if I'm hurt and it's an ankle, I can spend time in the gym building up strength around that, like legs, chest, everything else. And that kind of one that keeps me sane. And I think staying sane, being confident is like a good part of recovery. Um, if you feel, if you feel awful in general, you're going to have a hard time healing. And, um, but, but that's kind of the main thing for me. And and then just little exercise, like you could do ankle stretches with a little band and stuff like that, but it's all, it all, it's all dependent on what the injury is. But do you have any secret tips for recovering any kind of injury? Like, what do you do? What makes you feel better? Apple yeah. cider vinegar, <laughs> no, raw so- eggs, beer (laughs) beer a lot of beer um so no as you said you know if you do go to the doctor uh whether you go to the doctor or not uh my really like key thing for me i believe that injury recovery starts the second it happens yeah that's the most important thing people don't take that seriously and they're way worse and i and part of me thinks like that's why like I'm pretty strong in my whole, like, you know, I will give it a couple days, you know, before I go to the doctor because twice in two months, I got told the same thing. It's too swollen or you need a different kind of test and we can't do that here. Or you need to wait till you go home, you know? Yeah. And whether it's a sprain, whether it's a break, uh, just so you guys know, like in my experience, um, if you twist an ankle and it gets super, super swollen, it could be broken. It could not. Sometimes ligaments swell up even more than ankle, like bones. Sometimes bones. It, it depends on where it is. Y- your ankle could swell like a balloon or it could not swell at all. Uh, it doesn't mean that something's broken. It doesn't mean that something's not broken. You know? Um, right. But if it's too swollen, the they can't really do anything yet. The x-rays, if it's too swollen, won't tell you anything. And if the x-rays, if you know, if it's not swollen and the x-rays can tell you something, what I'm getting at is that the, the first thing is always the same prevent swellings and, and lower the swelling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So Mm -hmm. like when I twisted my ankle in, in Virginia uh, or West Virginia, you know, first it was, let me see if I can walk this off. Is this an ankle injury or did I just tweak it? because I wanted to know if I was gonna be able to ride the contest, you know? Mm -hmm. And I tried to walk around and stand on my bike for two hours, literally until that event started. And five minutes before it started, I finally pulled the plug and I said, no more. And, but I kept my, all my pads on. I kept my, my knee pads on, my compression pants, my shin pads. I kept my ankle brace on. I kept everything on to compress it while I was still there because I didn't have ice. This, I knew that swelling I down. knew the second that I took it off, it was going to start swelling. And when we were about to leave, I finally took it off to look at it. And then, you know, that was when we had ice, 
only took it off mm-hmm. when I knew I was going to have, have ice. And then the next two days, you know, it's ice, 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 ice. And what actually made me go to the doctor for that one was after like that first day, it was more black and blue and purple than I'd ever seen anything on my own body. Ooh. I'd <laughs> never seen something change that kind of color. Yeah. And it worried me because I'd never seen that. The yeah. pain was and manageable. Give it a day to figure it out. Yeah. The pain was totally manageable. Um, I did get that. Have you ever had that pain where like, because all the blood is rushing there, you get really cold. Mm, Have you ever had that? So. so I get that a couple times a year, probably like I'll hit the ground so hard. My body hurts that when I lay down in bed, I get really bad chills and like my, like I'll get feverish almost. It's like my, that's how my body deals with injury. It just happens. But yeah, like I was so cold and, um, it was so swollen and it was so purple. I was like, there is no way that this thing is not messed up, you yeah. know? So reduce the swelling. Yeah. And then when, of course, like when I went costs. there, when I went to the doctor, they were like, it's too swollen for us to tell in the x-ray. They said, nothing stands out, but it's too swollen to know if there's not any hairline fractures, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But they said, nothing looks out of place. And so I took that as, okay. They gave me a boot. And for three weeks, I treated it like it was broken. And then I yeah. felt good as new as soon as like, you know, that was off. And then I did my, the rest of my recovery. And so that recovery consisted of icing every day, elevating. Like I said, I wasn't planning on going back to the doctor to confirm the break. I just treated it as if there was hairline fractures, you know, nothing yeah. was out of place. That's what I wanted to know. So I tried to limit standing on it. I would, uh, Ice it every day, elevate it. Um, and then, you know, then you kind of, like I said, you slowly work into, you know, weight bearing, you know, on something like that. And then, you know, just, I kind of continue icing. Like to me, icing makes me feel better. Even if, you know, maybe after a certain amount of time, icing is no longer necessary. Uh, that thing was swollen for two and a half weeks. Like, and then it got all that yellow, gross That's looking crazy. bruising. And it actually started yeah. to hurt more as the swelling went down because once I would stand up, all that swelling would rush back and it would like pulse. And so that one was weird because it went from like hurting quite a bit for two weeks to then just all of a sudden not. As soon as the swelling was completely gone, it no longer mm-hmm. had any pain. Um, but uh, for me, you know, on top of icing, it's distraction. It's yeah, finding find things to distract. To like I had, busy. I had weddings to work on. So I just elevate and work on the computer. Um, and so to me, that's like the biggest thing is I feel like with an injury, if you're someone that, you know, works a normal job, you know, or like a nine to five, right. like that you have to go to, if that stops you from working, I could see how you would feel like very unproductive and kind of like go into like a slump. You can't ride, you can't work, you know, whereas yeah. me, I get hurt. I got no choice. My work is on the computer. Like that would be a shitty excuse. Oh, I didn't get your wedding edited because I broke my ankle. Yeah. Even though I was it's sitting like, on my computer. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So for me, it's like having an injury, I treat it as an opportunity to one, do what you said and like keep your physical fitness up if you can elsewhere, you know, other parts of your body, Mm -hmm. you know, but also like use that as an opportunity to be productive in something else, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause I think the mental side of it's just as important as the physical side. Like I, I see a lot of people, you, you get some kind of injury and then you're not able to do things that you love because you, you're, you're hurt. And like your life has just kind of got flipped on its head for a little bit and you could, you kind of get depressed. And like, if you're depressed, you can't, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't directly correlate, but in my head, it correlates quite a bit that you've got to be in a good headspace if you're going to let your body heal. It's like, they say sleep has a lot to do with things like that. And, and I think your mental space is very similar. And if you're not distracted, like if you're just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself and being sad, I, I think the recovery is going to be a lot slower than it would be if you, you just kept yourself busy doing something else that you still enjoy. Like you, you might have to find it because like, Oh man, 
every Saturday I'm riding my bike and, and now I can't do that. You got to find something else, man. You can't just sit around and, and cry about that. Um, otherwise the, the injury is going to take a lot longer to heal up. And so I, well, it also feels as soon as like you get it takes hurt. longer, you know? Oh, true. Yeah. Like, Cause you're, you're, you're not just distracted thinking about it all the time. Like, so for me, it's like, I get hurt. I can work on my photography. I can work on editing. Yeah. I can work on my websites. I can edit any kind of like backlog of content. I can play the guitar. Like it's my time to like do those things. And then what I, what I generally try to do is not even really think about, Oh, I'm going to get back on the bike. I'm gonna get back on the bike. You know, mm -hmm. I try not to even really think of that until it's getting pretty close to where I can start working myself up to that. Yeah. yeah. Like I almost am like, let me just completely forget bikes exist for a little bit for a few weeks, get this stuff going. And then when I'm like back to training a little bit and like, I can see it, that's when I'm like, okay, let me think about bikes again. You know, it's like, right. for me, like I said, it's, it's like kind of just timing that distraction and just keeping mentally strong. But, but yeah, dealing with the injury physically icing it as soon as it happens, you know, making the decision of whether or not you're going to, you know, go see a doctor about it. If you think it's bad enough, or if you don't, mm -hmm. you know, you either go to the doctor for a game plan or you got to look to yourself for a game plan. Just because you don't go to the right. doctor doesn't mean you can just write it off. Like it's totally fine because if you did injure it a little bit, you will injure it again. You know, you still have to treat it as if it's, yeah, you know, an injury and, you know, still, still take it as you may have pulled a muscle. If you pull the muscle in the gym, you're not going to go work out that same muscle the next day in the gym. You might right. not even work it out for two weeks. You're just like riding is the same. If you twist an ankle, you're not just going to be strong the next day. So it's not going to happen like that. Um, I had a friend who tore his ACL and meniscus, I think in one knee and he was out for, you know, he had surgery. He was out for a long time. And then he didn't do like they wanted him to do physical therapy and he didn't do it. Like he just kind of half-assed it and then got back riding way too soon and got hyped because all the boys from El Paso came out and like, it was just, it was a really good session and he got super hyped and tried a, a trick and fell. And I think he overcompensated so that he didn't hurt his, his right knee. You know, he overcompensated and put all his weight on his left tore his ACL and meniscus on the other knee. Like it was, it was within, within six months of the other injury, all this time off first time back on the bike, whammies his other knee. And I'm like, I honestly, we gave him shit cause he was being dramatic. We're like, you didn't, you didn't mess up your other knee. And then he actually did. And I felt kind of bad. But, but he's good now. He's good now. But moral of the story, in my expert opinion, had he taken the physical therapy seriously, I think that that side of his body would have been strong enough that he could have could have taken the fall like normal and evenly distributed that out. You know what well, I mean? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, it would have. Yeah, it would have gotten his his original bad knee back to the place where he could trust it. Because I think that's yeah. the biggest thing is when you come back from an injury you have to, you're scared. You got to build trust in that, in that part again. Like after like six months after hurting my knee, like I said, the, I, I did those two weeks at Highland coaching, but I still didn't have full trust. Remember I told you, I was like, I still knew it was yeah. a little risky. So I didn't ride for a while because I still just wasn't sure I wanted to get through my, my wedding season. I wanted to, you know, make sure I could deliver for my clients and now I'm slowly, you know, building that trust, hitting my knee on mm -hmm. the handlebars and not having hit it right where it hurt and having that not affect me like that built a lot of a lot of trust. Like you got to get the trust built. And when you say, you know, skipping physical therapy and stuff, I think a lot of people not only do you have to build trust in, uh, you know, that body part mentally, but the rest of your body has to like relearn how to work together with the part that was injured. And yeah. I think that's a lot of, th a lot of things is when you come back from an in injury, you can't just rehab that. Like if you have, you know, say your left ankle takes you out and you're in a boot or crutches for like 
say you're on crutches for two weeks, then a boot for two yeah. weeks. That whole but then side of your body. That is whole different. leg is not right. But also you haven't yeah. rode in four weeks. You want to tell me that all your fast twitch muscles in your legs are what they were four weeks ago. It doesn't right. take long yeah, for that stuff to like deteriorate. Back. So people will like be like, Oh no, but see, look at how strong my ankle that I just broke is. Yeah. But how's all the rest of your muscles in that leg that you mm -hmm. haven't worked out in six weeks? How's the muscles in your other leg that hasn't done anything besides walk in, in a while, you know? So it's like doing like full body conditioning when you come back from an injury, I think is often overlooked which is the yeah. the thing that you know is very beneficial for having a doctor and following their plan because that's what they're trying yeah, to do yeah. they're trying to safely get you back to where you where you were and like i said if you think it's just a minor injury you still want to treat it like it's more major otherwise it could turn into one that oh for is. sure yeah and we don't realize that like I don't remember what I did. I think it was my knee or something. Um, just hurt it or something. But anyway, it was so weird because I'd go to the gym and one of the machines you can leg press, but each leg's independent. And I think I could do like, say two plates with my left leg, but my right leg, I couldn't, couldn't get close. And it's like, okay, I hurt my knee, but my quads and my hamstrings are severely weaker than my other one. And it was just because that, the, the way you like cater your body's different because you've got something hurting. Like we're going to walk differently. We're going to do everything differently. And so when you get back on the bike, I think especially after an injury, it's, it's particularly important to um, start slow and take it easy so that you can build up that confidence and that strength throughout your whole body and your reflexes. Like that was a good one to point out. The reflexes, man, are, are super important because that's, that's what helps you prevent injury. That's Nick has good reflexes. That's why they call him Nick the cat because he's got the cat. Like just kidding. Nobody's ever called him that. I don't think, but <laughs> definitely but <anyway>. not. <laughs> um, Nick's like, wait, what? But no, like that's like the thing is like, uh, you know, and, riding bikes it already creates such bad muscle imbalances like, i'm glad you brought that up because i was gonna like, say it the way I, we stand on our pedals no i would say our hips are, are out of whack i would say i i think that that's where a lot of my hip problems stem from is one bad genetics because my mom has hip issues too very similar ones mm -hmm. but mine are worse than hers and i so i think mine is um it's uh accentuated by one all of the time I spend sitting in an office on a computer. Right. And when I say an office, I mean my couch. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, also, you know, I didn't take conditioning seriously unless it was after an injury. Otherwise yeah. I didn't take conditioning and the gym seriously for like the first forever. I'm still bad at the gym. I'm still really bad at doing that. Like I need a trainer to like, tell me and I, that's a big fault of mine. I'm bad at that. My hips probably would be fine right now if I would just really put in the work. Stick to but it. anyways, I basically like to think of it as that for the majority of the last 10 years, the only exercise that I've done is a left foot forward lunge because I am left foot forward on the bike. So imagine you went to the gym every <laughs> single day for 10 years and all you did was left foot forward lunges you know, yeah, yeah. like that's pretty much what riding bikes is. So like you need to have yeah. other no, things. So imagine I do a left foot forward lunge every day and then I hurt my left ankle and then I don't do anything for like six weeks. And then I just try to ride. Now what's going to happen? Who knows? Like, like the muscle imbalance was already there and now it's going to be right. even worse, you know, because now my right leg Cause which one do you think you think the right leg, like your back foot does more work on the bike or the front? I think the back. I don't know. I think I might, I might say the, the front, I think it's supposed to be the front. That's how you pop. I think, but it's, I think uh, my back leg does my more cause I'm goofy, goofy footed when I spin and I oh, land, true, true. my yeah, hip yeah. dips down into that back leg. Cause that's the way I'm spinning instead of like down onto like, right. you know, as if you're stepping forward, mine's like back. So I think my right leg, that mm. muscle takes more of everything, which is why I think it's so, yeah. so, so tight. But yeah, so if like, if my left leg, maybe let's say just, I don't know for sure, but if it, if it was already the weaker one and then have six weeks of not using that leg much, 
Then when I get yeah, on the bike, done. then I'm just making problems even, even worse. Really mm. now relying on my back leg. And then a couple rounds of that, you could be like that guy in that well, one movie you... who just works out this arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, just think about when you fall. What, no matter how you fall. Like, you fall and you hit your shoulder. You fall and you hit your leg. Or, or just like any kind of normal fall. You're, that's going to cause your muscles to tighten up naturally, right? And what that's going to do is that's going to pull everything together around on that side where where it's so weird to think like a normal person just gets out of bed and doesn't feel sore or anything like they're just chilling. Their body's not half your body's not all compressed or, you know, and these are just weird things that we just live with. Like if I go to the gym and I do whatever these are with cables, like to, to get the upper pecs or lower pecs, I, this part of my trap locks up. And sometimes I'll do a trick and, and I'll turn my head a little bit and like, I'll pull a muscle. And I think it's because I spin and I'm always doing this. Like I spin this way more, more than not. And so I have like just weird imbalances in my traps or in my back muscles because of that. And it's just a very common thing. I think for most BMX riders that, that I don't know, we don't, we don't normal people take it for granted. And, and, um, but the thing you were touch, I wanted to touch on, um, like the discipline of staying in a routine or something like that, that's really hard to do. Like I know if, if I had someone training me at the gym, the, the results would be a hundred times better. And that's why bike school is the sponsor of this episode. No, but, um, but seriously, we like, don't teach the gym. <laughs> I don't know anything about But we about can hold you guys accountable with learning your tricks. And uh, if you guys want to be a member, the link's in the description. It's a low monthly fee, and you get access to a bunch of cool videos. And Nick and I, personally, Nick will come out there and make you. No, I'm just kidding. But but we will work with you so you guys can learn whatever you want. Um, and, and make sure you, you ride as safe as possible because getting injured is not very fun. Also, you want to talk about anything else? Oh. No, but I want one one last thing. Uh, do not take my advice on whether or not you should go to the doctor. That is your personal decision. I hold no responsibility. And also, if you hit your head, that one I don't play with. So if you hit your head, go go get a check. Yeah, out. that's, that's a, not, even with a helmet. Like that's a serious one for sure. No. Like the, the head smack, the ankle make twisty. You might be fine. The head smack, no. Um, I I know Nick. Nick's been thinking the whole episode, like, damn, I hope I don't get sued. I'm just saying and what uh, I do. I don't. Yeah, recommend no, we're just sharing our nothing. experience with you guys. If if we were doctors, we probably wouldn't be riding bikes. We'd be at the doctor's. Yeah, office you know what I actually recommend? It's not riding bikes. <laughs> I, that's what, <laughs> that's what I actually recommend. It's not to ride. Yeah, when bikes. you think back to all the all the injuries I've had, and just like I love it so much, but. But damn, it sucks sometimes. It hurts and and it's stressful. I don't know. You just fall in love with it and then you, you put everything else behind it and it gets you in some interesting situations. But but yeah, so basically sell your bike and you won't have to worry about it. Doug, how old are stuff. you? 26. 26? Look at all these gray hairs. Yeah. That's I mean, I got, bike. I got a lot of gray hairs because I'm, I'm 28 going on 61, so... Yeah, that's what it feels like, man. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for hanging out with us, and uh, we will see you in the next video.